get your views from television news. You'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder? How they fell so fast Well maybe that's a question That we're not supposed to ask Don't you think it's strange There were no fighter jets Did someone give the order Not to intercept and if they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. And where was our president? George W. That fool. He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. The Bushes and Bin Ladens Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded They flew his family out Osama got his training From the CIA Our soldiers took Afghanistan They let him slip away A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe At least the left camera, right? Yeah, probably. Hi, this is Bill Olson, and you're watching 9-11 was an inside job. I should probably change the name of that to the False Flag Show. We've had n nothing but a continuous stream of false flags. That, you know, every single operation since the original 93 bombing of the Trade Center, that was an FBI act. We just go on down the line. And I, I was going to make the story today about the... Uh, the trial of the last bomber who called for his witness a well-known attorney who happened to be on the flight and saw him get put on the flight by a Secret Service agent and guess what they 
did a plea bargain with the guy so that it wouldn't have to go to trial. And now the government skullduggery will be still underneath the clouds on that one. But we have breaking news today. You might call everybody you know around the TV right now. This is going to be pretty important if it turns out to be true. And there's always a possibility that, you know, it gets averted. But right now we're with imminent war with Iran. Within the next two weeks, we've given the green light to Israel to attack Iran. We've shipped bunker busters and cluster bombs to Israel, which, by the way, is a violation of all kinds of international laws. But those are to tear up the tarmac at the airports in Iran after the first strike of the Israeli attack so that they can't launch a counteroffensive. And uh, anyway, this news is... I, I watched very carefully. It's two days old now, and I've watched all the news that I could, including C-SPAN and the uh, Meet the Press, ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC. Nobody's talking about this. But here's the story. It starts out with the Obama administration desperately clinging to life. We know that the Democrats are about to throw Obama under the bus. So what does Obama need? He needs some diversion. How is he going to get it? They launched this devious thing that we all know is as Fast and Furious, where the ATF got caught red-handed shipping guns down to Mexico directly to the cartels. We're talking about tens of thousands of automatic weapons, blaming it on our local gun dealers so that they could go after our Second Amendment, but in the meantime, letting all the murders happen and then bringing back the cocaine Yes, we allowed the cartels to ship cocaine into this country again, just like Ali North in the Iran-Contra affair. But this time they were so shrewd. This is devilishly shrewd. All the guns were shipped from all over the United States, from every municipality, every little local area, and it involved low-level management in every city. Now, the Obama administration turns to these folks and says, hey, we can prosecute you and we can put you in jail, or you can back up our phony story about the attack on the, on the Saudi ambassador by an Iranian. Yeah, that's a phony story. None of the intelligence contacts that we know of have any of that, uh, uh, any knowledge of that operation in their data banks. The people that are supposed to be able to know looked it up and don't find anything about it. It's a brand new invention. It's a pack of lies invented by the Obama administration, and they're using that to justify going to war with Iran. Now, we've already got our troops, our ships, and everything mobilizing to head to the Straits of Hormuz, and there's going to be a big battle there. The Israelis are getting ready to launch. Now, I'm going to play this. this this is from Alex Jones. Now, Alex Jones, the last time he put on an alert like this was July 25th, 2001. And he said, if airplanes are used to hit the Trade Center towers and they blame it on Osama bin Laden, you'll know that it was a U.S. government fabrication. He said that. You can look it up on the Internet and see it yourself. And now he's saying, here comes World War III. And I'll let you judge for yourself. But nobody else is carrying this, and that's why I decided to change everything we had planned to put this on. So we're going to play. Are we ready in there? All right, here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a maximum alert, a maximum alert for all info warriors and people that love peace and liberty worldwide. Maximum alert. Alex Jones here coming to you from my home. I knew this was big two days ago when they said they foiled the Iranian plot to blow up the uh, Saudi embassy in D.C. and assassinate people, claiming that it was Mexican drug cartels. I knew that that was a cover for the Fast and Furious subpoenas that they knew were imminent the next day uh, or yesterday. Since then, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, who you better believe speaks for some of the better elements of the Pentagon uh, and of the ruling elite of this country, uh, he's reported in part of very important think tanks, uh, heavily involved in trying to kill bin Laden, has blown the whistle on a lot of 9-11 stuff, the super Congress. When he basically is un unleashed to come out and say something, you know it's important. Paul Watson's article uh, is up at Infowars.com. FBI insider, Obama administration, likely manufactured dubious terror plot. Uh, and Schaefer talked to a high-level FBI agent with clearances 
who knows that it's not in the system, that there was not a plot, repeat, not a plot, then, and again, people think I'm quick. I'm not really quick. A lot of this was hiding in plain view. I knew there'd be some false flag or build up for war. Uh, as the smokescreen for Obama's approval rating plunging, the fast and furious coming out, the Democrats calling for him not to run. And I said last week, if they don't start pulling a new war or false flag, Obama will be toast in one month. Then I discovered that uh, a member of my family who's an Army officer is being sent to Kuwait and was very tight-lipped, uh, and then I made some other calls and confirmed it's a green light attack. Israeli strike on Iran, repeat, within two weeks, T-minus two weeks. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next week. But the main forces and uh, logistics uh, forces for a U.S. back strike of the Israelis is building up in Kuwait uh, and surrounding areas right now. Uh, this is an absolute mega alert. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, um, the, it could not be any more hardcore. Then my phone rings ten times in a row until I jumped off the treadmill this morning and went over and got it. Dr. Steve Pachinik, and, uh, you know, he basically, uh, we, we know he's establishment. He's run overthrows of major governments, and we know he represents an element of the Pentagon. He said, you know the Pentagon knows there's going to be a strike. The bunker busters have been delivered to Israel. We don't want this. That's why Schaefer's gone public. And he basically put his cards on the table as if any of us needed him to and uh, just said, you know, I, well, he's coming on later. We'll see what he says. The point is he's been talking to a lot of people in current government intelligence and the Pentagon, and he said it's on. Uh, the government, uh, again, I would add, could stage terror attacks now and blame it on Iran. It is on. It is on. It is on. They could go with a new war, state terror attacks, mass arrest, Internet kill switches. They are testing the waters right now to completely drop the hammer on us. This is a mega red alert, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Mike Adams was going to be here today with like four guests on a host of key issues and doing the nightly news tonight. I was going to be back tomorrow live uh, via Skype, spending some time with my family, and Aaron Dykes doing the nightly news. Uh, but quite frankly, now I made well, the great technology I can broadcast from anywhere. But this is a maximum, maximum alert. I know we're going to break here, but just briefly taking us to break, Mike Adams, what do you think of this information? Well, Alex, uh, what an extraordinary day in human history. As you mentioned, this issue is exploding. The the drapes are off. You know, the, the cover stories are exploding in their faces right now. It's very clear, Alex, that Fast and Furious is what probably led them to have the motivation to start to drum up these other plots to distract people. It's that sleight of mind or sleight of hand tactic that they always use. And we're going to be covering that more here on The Alex Jones Show with Alex himself, with Paul Joseph Watson, and with Dr. Steve Pachinik when we return. So stay with us right here. We'll be right back after this break. Okay, now I'm actually going to play that one with Steve Pachinik. Um, if I can get control of my machine one more time. Oh, yeah. Um, but this is... Absolutely astounding. Now, the thing is, ever since 9-11, I, you know, I, I always view that as the point. All this stuff had been going on long before 9-11, just that we bought it all the time. We Every time they told us something, we went along with it. You know, we started getting suspicious around Waco, though, and uh, maybe a little bit more suspicious at the Oklahoma bombing, especially when they found three or four unexploded ordnance inside the building that couldn't be accounted for by a truck parked in front. But... Aside from that, and then we, 9/11 happened, or well, actually 9 9 whatever. What was the date when 93 when the FBI oh lackey gosh. went ahead and bombed him? But the one thing he did, he was smart. He recorded his FBI handler when he asked him, "Are we really going to use real bombs?" And the FBI handler said, "Yes." <laughs> so there was our FBI plot. And there, they didn't plan on that happening, and that got put under the the rug real quick but then 77 comes along the the convenient bombing in the middle of London subways and with the bottom of the of the railroad cars blown up and inward from an explosive place obviously underneath the vehicle and they tried to blame it on somebody's backpack you know by now we're getting to the point where oh yeah Whatever you say, it, it's it's got to be a lie. So go ahead and say it, and we'll laugh at it after you're done. And it's getting so ridiculous. Well, that's a good thing because now they can't get away with anything. 
only the blind, you know, brain dead meadow muffins will still buy the official story. Uh, that's an Ace Hayes term. <laughs> Uh, brain dead meadow muffins. Well, anyway, I want to go ahead and pull up this the 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 cut with Steve Pachinik. Now he's he's the guy who really is the secret agent, like Harrison Ford in that movie, the Tom Clancy movie. But the reason I bring up the Tom Clancy movie at all is that Steve Pachinik is the ghostwriter or the collaborator with Tom Clancy to make his novels so real. I mean, how do you suppose? They get away with, uh, you know, well, just so real. Let's put it that way. I, I've been really in, enthralled in some of those Tom Clancy novels. Now yeah. I see that they are based on reality, you know. But anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and play this. Steve Pachinik calls up uh, Alex Jones on a, you know, infrequent but regular basis, and. Uh, when he has something to say, you can bet that it's a fact. Anyway, let's let's listen to this and see what what you think. If I can get it going, there we go. <laughs> Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Mike Adams in studio there at the InfoWars studios. He'll be doing InfoWars Nightly News uh, this evening. We do have Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, uh, who came on a month ago and said that the Pentagon is upset about the move towards dictatorship of the Super Congress here in America. Schaefer basically speaks for the better elements of the Pentagon. There are different power structures. Uh, he was on Freedom Watch yesterday. FBI insider Obama administration is manufacturing this dubious terror plot. Uh, it doesn't exist. It's made up, according to his FBI, high-level security clearance source. Uh, Dr. Steve Pachinik contacted me this morning and said from his Pentagon sources and others, they don't want to hit Iran, and that this is all basically a setup for the buildup for Israel to hit them. Uh, I have family that's been deployed to Kuwait. I won't talk about it, but I know what he works in. It's logistics and uh, helicopter gunships, getting those ready for there in the Persian Gulf. And I've made some calls to other military sources when I learned this two nights ago. And uh, they said, how on earth do you know this? I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, that The word is the, the, the U.S. military is preparing to back up Israel uh, when the Iranians close the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, a gallon of gas will go from 8 to $10 conservatively. Uh, the Iranians will probably respond. Uh, different intelligence agencies can stage terror attacks. It's also blame it on Iran. Uh, Russia, China could get involved. This will undoubtedly destroy the economy, but it'll be a nice political diversion. What did Gerald Salente and others say? Look for a big war. Uh, what did Lindsey Williams say a year ago on our show? He said, next is Iran. And uh, that's from his big oil company, uh, Insiders, and I know who those sources are. One of them's died now. We can talk about him. Ken Fromm, the former head of Atlantic Richfield. The other one's even more high-powered. Uh, so so uh, we have all that information uh, right there. And Schaefer uh, came on a month ago and said, yes, Pentagon people, high level, he's basically a mouthpiece for them at a certain level. He's joining us tomorrow are upset about Obama moving towards a super Congress and dictatorship. Um, Schaefer's concerned about that. I know Dr. Steve Pachinik, whose bio is too long, will be joining us for longer tomorrow. He's waiting in the wings right now. Uh, you know, Co-author of Tom Clancy's books, you know that, ran Black Ops, wrote the book for the State Department on psychological warfare. Uh, he, he hardly ever calls me. This morning he was calling over and over again. I was on the treadmill. I jumped off and ran over there, and he said, just immediately, I said, are you calling about the Iran thing? And he said, yes. You know, the, well, I'll let him say it in his own words. But crystallize, Dr. Pachenik, uh, everything you're telling me is what I have from three military sources, what I've got from Schaefer, what I've got from Common Sense. Uh, this is incredible uh, that a high-level FBI with the highest-level security clearance says this plot doesn't exist. We're to believe Los Zetas, we know, trained at Fort Benning, Georgia, and are narcotics enforcers for big central bank uh, systems 
are supposedly working with some used car salesman. This is unbelievable. And it's right on time as Obama. People are talking about him stepping down, don't run again. Uh, fast and furious subpoenas go out. I know you've got incredible sources, and you basically put the cards on the table. You said, look, Alex, you know, I talked to a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in intelligence. appreciate the service you're doing, and, and I'm not getting into ego here. The point is I got from what you were saying that you've got a lot of sources like Schaefer does and that there are good guys in the government, the Pentagon, that are upset about what's happening. So let's put the cards on the table. Uh, the, the intel I've got is a strike on Iran by Israel within two weeks. The U.S. then responding uh, when Iran totally shuts down the oil supply. Well, the, the issue, and I can't thank you enough, and I, and I know our, our country, the real military and the real uh, patriots and the intelligence community uh, really love you and, and really are grateful. I came on because, once again, as a citizen, I'm not a hero, I'm a citizen, saying once again I have the, that this whole issue that came out of uh, Mexico, this entire nonsensical story, which even Mueller shamefully said was a Hollywood script, which it is, and it's a very bad script, where an informer car salesman talks about the potential of killing a Saudi ambassador in the United States, and that somehow this Iranian is related to people in Iran is absolutely absurd. It's disinformation. DEA has had a terrible history of corruption, incompetence, as you've seen in Fast and Furious. And more importantly, this is an indictment, once again, of Eric Holder, who lied to Congress. He lied, now lied to the American public about what he has supposedly learned in an uh, investigation. And more importantly, Mueller, who I'm absolutely ashamed of, the FBI director, who's a, a war hero from the Vietnam, has won major awards and, and was a, a, a combat hero, has been involved the 9-11 now is involved in this nonsensical story to create a pretext for an uh, attack by Israel on Iran. Now, why do I say that? Because two things happened. When I heard this nonsensical uh, intelligence report by DEA, ATF, CIA, and other elements, all of whom have been compromised and have had intelligence problems in the past, i.e., as we witnessed in the Osama bin Laden stupidity story, where no one in the world, absolutely no one in the world believes it, neither does Obama, and now Biden, the most incompetent vice president we had, with two aneurysms a history of plagiarism, and Hillary Clinton, a woman who is pathologically a liar, incompetent, is reaffirming that Iran, who has repeatedly said we don't need to attack the United States on their home base. I know the Iranians. I was involved with Khomeini. I was involved with Rasanjani. I don't love them, but I have respect for them. And they're very clear on their intention. Furthermore, the Iranians have proxy fights in Afghanistan with our soldiers soldiers and in Iraq. And at the same time, you can ask our generals that they have worked with the Iranians to keep down the Shiite populations, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. So both Biden is lying and is incompetent. And by the way, his in-law is Tom Donlan, who really should not be there. Obama once again is lying, once again should be considered for impeachment. We have serious war crimes here. Well, now, why do I say this? Because two weeks ago, and the report didn't mention this, cluster bombs were sent to Israel. Now, there is no reason for Israel to receive cluster bombs. They cannot. Cluster bombs are used to break up the tarmacs on other Air Force bases, but they're used to instigate a war. Now, cluster bombs do not necessarily be used in Syria because the Syrians have helped the Israelis with Hamas and the PLO. The Egyptians have now helped the Israelis release a, a soldier for 1,000 Palestinians. So Israel is not going to be using a cluster bomb. Bomb, but Israel needs to divert attention away from its domestic problems where a million people have been unemployed from the fact that it is, has an incompetent, dysfunctional civilian government, Netanyahu, and will create a war to divert that attention because the state of Palestine will be and should be recognized by the UN. And this is exactly what should happen around the world. In order to divert that attention, it has convinced Joseph Biden and Hillary Clinton to major supporters of the Jewish community here so that it can be uh, mobilized in order to support an Obama election, which does not look very likely. And ironically, Obama is creating another incident at the same way when Bush Jr. had very low approval in the ratings, when the unemployment was very high, 
And unlike George Bush Jr., whom I thought would have been the worst president, Obama's turning out to be by far the worst incompetent president we have ever had, who really should be impeached for the lies he committed, for the travesties of justice. Not and now for the incompetency. You have Biden, you have Hillary Clinton, you have Mueller, you have Panetta, all civilians. But that does not explain why our military, which has had to retreat from two wars and has been used as cannon fodder by civilians who are totally incompetent and sent into war to die for our country. We have the most brilliant, effective leaders in our military that I've ever seen in 30 years. They have been quiet. They have followed orders, but they are sick and tired of listening to incompetent civilians sending out brave men and women into battle and dying. We have special forces that work 24-7 time all over the world to knock out extremists, and yet they get no support. Our veterans get no support back here. And now, in order to uh, to uh, uh, promote his, his, Obama's election, he has gone to war again and created this nonsensical, but it is so absurd, this nonsense that Iran is about to attack the United States. Iran does not have to attack the United States. As a matter of fact, when I was involved with Khomeini, not one of our hostages was ever injured by Khomeini. It was, in fact, the terrorist group, the MEK, which is being supported by Free, a former head of the FBI, and was called the Musa Khadin that killed some of my CIA operatives, my, my State Department operatives, and they, in turn, are being supported by some of the prominent, uh, both liberals and right-wingers, who are receiving money. If you look at the list of the MEK, it's an issue we should talk about. They want them off the terrorist list. The real terrorists were the Musa Hadin who killed all of our uh, civilians and operatives in uh, Tehran. Hey, Dr. Pachenik, this, this is Mike Adams here. Um, uh, you're not able to hear Alex because he's on his cell phone, but Alex, uh, what, what's your take on all this? Well, let me just throw this in. No, no, Steve's on a, uh, a cell phone, so when I'm, when I'm talking, you can't hear me. I was just going to throw this in, sir. I have military sources. I know you have a hundred times what I have. I have common sense. I have Schaefer, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, coming out and being green-lighted, you know, who still is in the Pentagon and is also part of a big think tank to say this is bull. The New York Times has come out today and said this terror plot is made up. That shows the major elements of the power structure are saying don't go into Iran, just like Fox Fallon said no to Cheney when he tried to stage the attack. So these are my two questions for you, and tomorrow we'll get more into this. We appreciate you coming on on short notice. My, my point was, what are your current uh, sources, and we know you've got a lot of them, are they concurring with what I've been told, that Israel right now is test ballooning and intends to hit Iran in the next two weeks with bunker busters and cluster bombs to stop their Air Force retaliatory strike? They've just put into place more anti uh, 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 medium-range uh, uh, anti-ballistic missile systems, and and the word we've got is the attack on Iran has now been green-lighted. They put up this balloon. Oh look, Iran's going to attack us, and that it is on. So a, what is your intel on that? A, B, what what do you expect the Iranians to do? What are the different things that can happen if Iran is struck? Because the, the, the people like Ray McGovern and others I've talked to who work you know, with the CIA as analysts, they say it runs from bad to worst. Okay, sir, those are my questions, those two questions. The first answer is I, I will not quote any of my sources in my uh, extensive experience as a member of the Association of Former Intelligence Officers, the National Military Intelligence Association, and my extensive experience in dealing with Iran, with terrorists, and incompetent civilians, you are absolutely right. We are creating a false flag situation where Israel will go forth to attack Iran. What will happen in turn is Iran will not touch the United States. It never has and it never will. Iran is very effective at putting up pressure, number one, on Hezbollah, on Israel, on two, on Hamas, and, and affect Israel's northern border, its eastern border, and its southern border. In effect, what Israel is doing is approaching Armageddon, where it's, it's continuing its self-destructive behavior 
both militarily and civilian. I asked the Israeli ex-commanders of the IDF and the Mossad to come forth and to stop Netanyahu and stop the Americans who are involved in this attack because Israel will be seriously destroyed. The state of Palestine will exist. Egypt will be there. Syria will maintain its low-intensity conflict, but Iran will exact a huge amount of, of, of problems for Israel, and Israel knows that. And Israel cannot handle that. The IDF cannot handle three borders which will be exposed. It cannot handle both Hezbollah on the north, Hamas on the south, and the Jordanian border, which is extremely, extremely vulnerable. Steve, and at the question. same time, the Middle East will erupt in violence because Bahrain is the area where our military and the surrogates have effectively fighting Iran. But Iran will not be involved in domestic terrorism. How do we they don't stop need it. This war? I mean, is a very smart man. I always respect my enemies. And one of the things that's a problem is I do not respect our civilians. If I, as I have said repeatedly on this show, the American public has to be awakened to the fact we have an incompetent, dangerous president. I'm not saying the Democrat or Republican. We had it truthfully with, uh, with Bush Jr. But this one really is out of control. There you got it. And Steve Pachenik saying that we have an incompetent civilian leadership. I mean, when a military leader or military person says something like that, you know, you've got to sit back and listen, especially when our incompetent leadership is playing commander in chief. Well, we're going to kind of tone it down a little bit and get more into something more normal, like 9 11 was an inside job. And we <laughs> we'll turn it over to Marcella. So I'm a member of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Um, actually, I'm a member of two groups. Um, that's my primary one, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. And I just wanted to tell you about our meeting times. Um, as you can see on the screen, um, we're, that's our, our email address is Portland AE for Architects and Engineers, 9-11 Truth at yahoogroup.com. Um, please come and join us. Um, you'll, you'll be able to have access to different files and to future events. Um, and as you can see, we meet every other Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at True Brew. That's um, at 3370 Southeast Milwaukee Avenue here in Portland. That's about um, uh, the intersection, that's about two blocks south of the intersection of Milwaukee and Powell in Southeast. And our next meeting is next weekend, uh, Saturday, October 22nd. And um, yeah, we're, this is our next weekend will actually be just our third meeting. So we're, um, we're a very young group in Portland and we would love to hear your input. Uh, the, another group I'm a part of is the Portland 9-11 Truth Alliance. If maybe they could um, put it back up on the screen. But the uh, Portland 9-11 Truth Alliance, their website is www.pdx. Uh, sorry, .pdx911truth.com, and you can go and have have access to videos from talks the, the group is given. Uh, they meet every the first Friday of every month um, at 8 p.m. at the at the Lucky Lab. That's at 915 Southeast Hawthorne B Boulevard. They also meet every actually every Saturday, not every other Saturday. They meet every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at True Brew, the same location that Architects and Engineers meets. Um, and again, the address for that is 3370 Southeast Milwaukee Avenue. And the next, and the next meeting for that is going to be next Saturday. Um, um, not the 22nd, but um, because the Portland Truth Alliance meets every Saturday. So it'll be this coming Saturday as well. So come join both groups because we'll be in the same venue, the True Brew. And we'd love to have uh, concerned citizens uh, that want to be a part of our group and help have screenings and discussions around town. And, and help it bring in speakers as well. Yeah, that, that's the good part where you, you bring in the different speakers and you, people get to hear them right up in personal and get to ask them questions right then that they might have. Absolutely. Um, well, we're going to open up the phone lines now. Um, we have both phone lines today. It's 503-288-4442 and 503-288-4448. And pretty soon that'll be up on the screen. In the meantime, um, <clears throat> I guess uh, all we can do is kind of sit back in shock from that, you know, breaking news. Uh, of Iran, yeah. What sort of reaction do you have to that? I mean, it, uh, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, here I am, a 
a celebrity on TV. I'm, so what am I supposed to act? I, I mean, how? I don't know. It's just, it, it's shocking. I, I, I just, I heard, I feel like I've been, yeah, I feel like in the last couple of days, I really have been hearing about, about the um, possibility of, of Iran being uh, attacked. Uh, and that's just, it just, well, it does seem. No matter who does it, Israel or the United States, the ships are going to be sunk right in the streets of Hormuz. And that might, you know, in addition to whatever oil spill there is, it blocks all the oil uh, up and down that whole gulf. And that means that. Uh, two, two calls. Yeah, the price of gas will go up to ten gallons, ten dollars a gallon plus. Yeah. We already have a phone call, so let's take it. Hi, Bill. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? What do you think about that news? Well, it doesn't surprise me one bit. You know. <laughs> yeah, our eyes are open. You know, like I was saying. <laughs> well, the coup d'état it, it, it happened back on uh, November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. Right. And it's been, uh, the last Kennedy. Well, yeah, but, you know, the last message that Eisenhower gave to the American public was, you people need to wake up. Everybody is asleep. The industrial military complex is looking to take over the country. And the coup d'etat happened, like I said, November 22nd, 1963. But what I want to call about was Building 7. You know, this no jet plane ever crashed into Building 7. And it was physically impossible to, in connection to the laws of physics, for that building to be demolished the way that it was, unless it was at a, with a controlled demolition. Now, the man that was on duty that day as the janitor in that building, he was rescued by an operative. And the guy, the, the, the janitor, he said that he witnessed these ops, well, the only people that were black for teased or spooks, they were running out of the building he saw like six to eight of them. He heard the explosions in the building, got trapped, and did some guy, some operative, helped him get out of the building. He was supposed to testify in front of a grand uh, jury in, in connection to what he saw I'm and what now. he heard, and he died within 30 days. Uh. Yeah, that's uh, Rodriguez you're talking about. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, I mean... <laughs> I talked to you before, Bill. I was an iron worker. I was on that Rockefeller building, went up uh, wow. across the street from the bottom bench or fifth and flower, and I know what the columns look like on a high rise building. And you're I not mean, even going to make them warm after 20 minutes. Well, sir, you know, you, you have to consider that the incinerator rate of, uh, of, let's say, jet fuel is going to be about 14, 16, 1800 degrees. It takes at least 2800 degrees to melt that kind of metal. That's and right. The government said they're a thousand they degrees were, short, and they can't make up for that. You know that that's one thing that they can't make up for is this that gap in the science right there. And, exactly. Um, and, and, and you know, my point is, I know what molten metal looks like, and I saw it pouring out of the tower. And then the government said there was no there was no uh, molten metal. But see, the thing is, there's no forensics that can be performed on anything in connection to the whole catastrophe that I call 9-11 because the evidence was taken to Japan and destroyed. But to China, well, uh, or to China, or Else, to China. elsewhere, but, but melted yes, down it right was, away. Yeah, it was taken abroad. Exactly. <laughs> so there's no way that we can do any type of forensic evidence. There's no way that we can have a for real kind of uh, investigation in connection to what had really happened because right away the evidence was Right. Well, both so, both FEMA and the USGS did, you know, an analysis of the dust, and they found those microspheres, and they're in their, both of their reports. It's not just Stephen Jones who found them. And so that's the other part of the thing. They left carefully left all of that out of the 9-11 Commission report. But it and, exists. And, you know, here's one thing. Just like the Mount St. Helens ash, there's mountains of it over in Washington where they you know, took it after unburying the freeway and so on. And you could dig into that just a few feet and you'd have unspoiled Mount, Mount St. Helens ash. The same thing with the, with the piles of ash from 9-11. The, the early report said that there were tons and tons of those microspheres in that dust. And if that's true, you could go dig into any of that dust and still find them. So it's not like, I mean, if we did that, they couldn't weasel anymore, you know? There's no way they can hide from that. Well, you know, I watched a commercial on television about 
when Obama says that justice has been served. Oh. But justice, I mean, wait a minute. They, you know, they an, went out. An extrajudicial murder. And, yeah, exactly. He ordered a SEAL team, supposedly, to go and uh, extract, not extract, to give a green light. That means, you know, to take the guy out. He was never formally charged with anything. All that was was an assassination. And, you know, justice would have been served if they would have arrested him and brought him back here to this country to stand trial. Yeah, Osama bin oh. Laden, if he had ever exactly. been charged with anything. Exactly. And, you see, justice wasn't served. And I mean, he also that said that same thing about Anwar al Alalaki. You remember, yeah. we, um, we used a, a drone missile to take him out and everybody near him. Yes. But that was okay. Yes. They were collateral damage. That was okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's been so much been going on in the country for so many years. I mean, behind the scenes. And, and people, the general public, don't really realize what the hell is going on. It's like everybody's walking around with blinders on. And man, I thank God for you guys because you know what? You got the guts to stand up for what you believe in, okay? And I'm like that myself. I'm willing to die for what I believe in. Well, I got to be honest. I haven't been threatened with death yet, but uh, uh, I mean, you know, the, about the only sacrifice you make is is socially, you know, being shunned by everybody that thinks that the government can do no wrong. Uh, but one by one, they come back to my side at, eventually. I, I just hope it's sooner than later. Well, if you're objective and don't come across as a fanatical, you know, ranting and raving like a lunatic, <laughs> and, you know, you try to tell people, it, just give them the concise facts. And, and I, it's like uh, this doctor who was given the, uh, the job to denazify de uh, Hitler's elite after World War II. He put him in a room... And he said, you know what, tell me what you know about communism. <laughs> he let them use their own minds to figure out and, and point out the contradictions. And, you know, we're all grown adults here, and we should be able to bring people to the enlightenment of what really happened. You know, you, you explain the physics of everything that, that went down, and then, you know, let them draw their own conclusions. And, you know, there's a lot more people are, are sitting up and taking notice. They're going, wait a minute. Maybe there might be something to what you say. <laughs> I've talked to you about that. Uh, I'm the guy who wrote this song. And I've talked to you already, Bill, about this. And the musicians that I had, they all walked away from me. And, and, and they're all like, they excommunicated me <laughs> from their presence. You know, they're like, I'm this fanatic and, and everything else. So, like, it's starting to happen to me. Well, and they're telling me, no, 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 no. Just they, hang uh, in there. Well, yeah. I'm gonna. I mean, you know, because yeah. common sense, I think, is the, the thing that's what's, what's missing from the equation here. And if, and if you, again, if you live in the Portland area, you know, please come to, to True Brew, which is uh, at um, the address. Because um, one, one or the other of the groups, either the Portland 9-11 Truth Alliance or the architects and engineers um, yes. for 9-11 Truth, you know, they meet, you know, so if you want to vocalize any, you know, because sometimes it is great to be around other people that have similar concerns to you. So sometimes just a vent, you know, um, you know, so consider coming, you know, uh, sometime, you know, this year even, sometime in the next month. Well, you know, it's, just, uh, uh, it, uh, well, thank you. I appreciate your time. I don't want to take up, you know, all your time. I'm sure there's other people who want to talk to you. It's just that... Uh, I'm handicapped, I'm disabled. Well, and, then uh, keep watching this show and we'll try to bring you as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's God sent to me. And like I said, God bless you. And I oh. uh, hope to meet you soon. Yeah, start and watching Cable Access. I forgot to get, uh, I might be able to pull up the schedule before the end of the show, but uh, we've got four more showings this week. I mean, a couple of them day after tomorrow, I think. Excellent. But on of the entire, yeah, she has it right there. Explosive so, evidence. Uh, well, experts speak um, out. So, yes, yeah. it's, it's a two-hour and eighteen-minute video, that, but it'll be on four more times in the next month and in its entirety. So we we only saw forty-five minutes of it on my show. Yeah. I understand that. It's, it's just that none of the, the physics don't add up. Common sense <laughs> will tell you the structural. Uh, physics, you know, every, the chemicals, everything. It just, it just doesn't not make sense. Right on. And, 
that's all I can say, and uh, hopefully uh, I get to meet mm. you guys, you know, in person. Oh, that's and, uh, another thing. If you, you ever get down to PCM, you can sure watch the show, up, you know, in the studio. Well, anyway, thanks a lot for calling. And our next show's in two, well, I, I guess it'll probably be around the 1st of November sometime. Whatever the first Saturday in November is. I didn't even look it up before the show. Sorry. <laughs> it's in two weeks. Well, that's okay. I'll be. I will um, keep watching the screen, and uh, hopefully that we'll be able to get together because I have a whole lot more information about the illustrious endeavors of our CIA and everything abroad. And uh, it'd be you'd be amazed. It, it looks like this is a five Saturday month, so there'll be two more Saturdays where I'm not on before you see me again. I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because okay. we're, okay. we're not every other Saturday. It's it's the first and third. And when they have oh. five, it really messes it up. <laughs> okay, that's a good correction. Well, yeah. we're going to get back on track about what we're talking about. 9-11, the inside job. Right on. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, and we were also talking about how people look at you. And I just had an argument with one of our cameramen on another show. And he, he was saying, you know, I was trying to tell him, the way the Fed is set up, it, it, it's an exponential function. It automatically, you know, diminishes the value of the cash. And he got mad at me. He said, no, it's it's the, the person who runs it, the person that runs it at fault, not the Fed itself. And what? You know, I just could he couldn't understand that people come and go, but the Fed stays the same. And that's the part I'm talking about. And... Boy, I hope we there's a war protest going on right now in downtown Portland, and I hope it's a good one because we need people to wake up and stop having these wars. We're about to go to war with Iran. Um, oh, we have a call. I should have said hello. Uh, well, they gave up on me. <laughs> I waited too long. <clears throat> but, yeah, I think the war protest is for the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Of of Okay, for for, or what? Or, for Afghanistan for the oh the invasion, invasion of Afghanistan, of, I, but I, I thought. that would have been nine ten. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Because we signed the order, or Ob uh, President Bush signed the order to attack Afghanistan the day before nine eleven, and then blamed oh. it on nine eleven. I mean, oh, how wow. much more oh. evidence do we need, folks? <laughs> there was a done deal going to going to Afghanistan and going to Iraq were the two main things the president wanted from the day he was in office, according to people. Another caller. Okay, we got another one. Let's hope that you stuck around. Hello? Caller? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I have one uh, request, and then I have a, a question. Sure. Uh, one is uh, to the young lady there. Um, the announcements of the places where to go and the time and everything like that are really small. It's extremely hard to read. Yes. I, oh, would you the, please we, change the font. Yeah, make it bigger so people can make read. We'll bigger, run it one more change time. Change the font too. It's a, one of those double fonts. You know, you need a simple font, and the other is you have a red color for the time, and it's blurred. So it's the, really hard to read where the places are and the times. Oh, okay. It's the font and the color. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Right thank on. Thank you. And the other question I have is, oh, I yeah. have watched your show, I'm online and everything with all of this. My question is, why haven't anybody, now there's 1,500 or more scientists that are signed up for a petition, and I'd like to know why anybody like Michael Moore and some, and I know, I believe there was a uh, Senator Graham, I think he's from Georgia, who was also supposed to um, testify some kind of way uh, in, in, in the Senate about how the war was started and it was wrong and everything. Why aren't some of these people that are out there, like Michael Moore, investigating? Oh, they never mention anything about the buildings being imploded. Yeah, that's true. And I, we've always criticized Michael Moore about that, but he was dead on about the, the lead up to the Iraq war in his movie 9 11. Right, or totally. Fahrenheit. totally. Fahrenheit. But since that time, yeah, I know. And there is more and more and more evidence coming out of all of this, but you never, I'm a news person, and you never hear it from well, anybody else. Well, how about Geraldo? Did you see Geraldo do his 180 reverse? I won't watch that show. 
No, but I wouldn't either. But now, I mean, what happened was right in I the I didn't mid- see it. I don't have cable like that. I don't, I don't know Well, that. you you can go on YouTube and check out right. um, Geraldo on Judge Napolitano's show where he talks about 9-11 and the family members turned him around. He saw some films about the Building 7 and that convinced him. And he did a... In, in 2007, he had s- said to the 9-11 group, get a life. 9-11 was an inside job. What a joke. Get a life. Right. But two years later, the family members with Bob McEl- McElveen, I think was his name. Was that the one I'm that sure. led New York family members? Anyway, he, yeah, he convinced sure. Geraldo and got five minutes on Geraldo and on Judge Napolitano's show. And they showed a whole bunch of that... Uh, 9-11, the original one, Blueprint right. for Destruction. Jesse, Jesse Ventura, too, has, has uh, been, you know, in, in different... Uh, He's uh, helped an awful things. lot. Yeah, but I but I have one comment also to make. Uh, sure. You answered, me, you answered my question there, but I have one comment to make, that if you look at the situation that President Obama, be it right or wrong, is in, how long do you think he would last <laughs> if all this stuff was brought up now? Maybe after November of 212, <laughs> but not now. Do you know what kind of fear there would be in the government? Well, I the- think that's. I think we're going to be seeing that because this is this is news that is not going to stay on the back burner. No, no. But I think now is not the time to actually do this. And so, uh, if you could just hold on for a while, I think this will all materialize because it's coming out more and more. Uh, but what, what, you mean hold on so that Obama can stay president? Well, I think so, because you're not going to get a Republican to do this. Uh, I think that we need to throw out any crook. Well, I know, but who you got in place? Well, Michael we don't know Martin? yet. How about Ralph Nader? He's not a crook. They're not going to vote for him. I'm, I vote for him every single time. Well, I know, but there's not enough of you. I've only voted for him once. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. <laughs> All right. Thank you for Thanks. listening to me. I need a different font so I can read the, the times. Yeah, okay. They're uh, working on you. that right now, I think. Keep up the good work. Actually, thank you. I'm going to go try and okay. have, have that work done. Okay. And do we have any other calls? Okay, well, just put them on when they come in. In the meantime, um, I don't know. They're... <laughs> There's all kinds of problems that people have. Uh, you know, I conveniently didn't go down to the war protest today because, you know, I'm doing the show. Oh, we have a call. Go ahead, caller. People don't need to hear me. Let's hear what you have to say. Hello. Um, yes, I'm calling in uh, to touch base on the um, threat against Iran by Israel. Oh, yeah. And, and uh I don't know how many Americans know that this has been on the front burner for Israel since 2005, the, the want to bomb. Yeah, Ray McGovern has talked about it before. I, well, I attend the American-Israeli the APAC conferences uh-huh. here at the Jewish Community Center, uh-huh. and it would make you sick to see how many of our state, local, and national representatives go to that conference. That's where the money bow is. Bow down to them, yes. But I'm telling you, <sighs> that that is uh, the number one topic for the last three years at that conference. And they've had national APAC people come to talk to people here in Portland. They need to bomb Iran. Yeah, That's I, been their number one. Palestine, they keep saying, well, there's not going to be a Palestine state. Nothing's going to happen there. What we need to do is we need to bomb Iran. And they're blatant God. about it. Yeah, and there's no way they can do it without our help. Of course we're going to, they, they can't, but the thing is I think we're going to give them, like you said, the green light to go ahead with it. Yeah, and then we're supposed I to follow up. We've, we're moving our it. troops to do that, our ships and our military. I, I, I hope that we get some sort of common sense. First of all, the our military, the ones that don't want to be involved, say that we can't do it because our troops are too wrapped up in Afghanistan or Libya right now. <laughs> So, oh, there's a call. Anyway, we got another caller. The other one what? disappeared rather abruptly. Yeah, go ahead, caller. We got four minutes. Yeah, I was just wondering how much money are you guys going to be able to dump into this thing before... I think the reality is that these guys that you're going up against have like trillions of dollars. Well, if it's a dollar-to-dollar battle, we lost already. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they could just... I mean, they could make you look like they could 
Just, well, you see what I'm saying? That, that's the problem that's... You know, the, there's something know. to be said about public opinion. And, you know, for one thing, you, you're, you're, if you're filthy rich, your money's no good if you can't spend it anywhere. And right. But, but what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is these guys can do things to people without... Oh, they can make me and everybody I ever heard of disappear. And, you know, I understand that. Right. But, uh, but so that, that, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, okay, if you push it right to the edge, even if you win the battle, the war, you know, you get the whole world to see the truth. What good is that if in the end they make you look like a criminal or well, crazy? You know what I'm saying? They could play dope on you. If they, I mean, these guys are beyond... Power means nothing to them. Yeah, portray me as absolutely, a, as absolutely a pot smoker, dope head. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Hey, I, I I understand what you guys. You know, I believe. Okay, it's pretty obvious. Okay, but I'm just I, you know. I, I understand really, what you're saying, and and you know you can be paralyzed by fear. And the way I look at it is, I'm getting right. I'm 60 years old. I'm getting to the point where I'm getting pissed that this this piece that I worked all my life for never got here. Now I'm pissed at everybody right. else for not joining in on time. Okay, well I wish you guys well, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I mean, look, man, these guys they're the cream of the crop. You know, forget about the oil companies. Forget about blah blah blah. These guys. Uh, they're beyond, you know that that bed brick, that bed and beyond thing. Okay, these guys are beyond. They're <laughs> their whole life. I mean, millions of dollars since they were little babies been dumped on them to play with. That's how big they are. Okay, but I wish you guys luck and yeah. So far, no, you know, I haven't seen any. Nobody even is aware of me, as far as I know. <laughs> Well, right. I, I, well I, I want you to know that I mean, Bill has been doing this every other Saturday for four years, and that's a level of commitment that inspires. And yeah. I, I saw Bill's first show about two years ago, and if it wasn't for people like Bill, I don't think that I would have become an activist about issues like oh, this. So, so it isn't about getting well, involved. I, I, I totally agree with you guys. I mean, look, you're right. Okay, it's, it's, it's too obvious. And so it's not know, about. And, and so, like you know, November and so five. yeah, and so just know that you know you can come, you know, be a part of our groups, you know, that we're trying to be active with at True Brew on Saturdays, um, right. you know, and and it isn't meant to be fear based. It is really meant to be where we kind of you know like advocate for each other. And, you know, try and push along, because if you get all paralyzed, then, you know, I mean, you're not doing yourself or the group any favors. And so, it really, just try and keep a upper chin about it. And we're just moving forward, because it, it is about educating. It isn't about just being a dissident um, citizen and you swallow it. It's about kind of releasing your energy in an educated, focused way. Now, the other thing is, I'm already unemployed, destitute, in tax trouble. You know, I just had to scramble today to get some cash so I could buy some cat food for my kitties. You know, so what are they going to do? Take my job away from me? You know, they could put me in jail and then my cats don't get fed. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm already at the bottom and so are so many other people. And that's where the strength is going to come. The people that really, you know, hey, if I don't make some sort of effort to get a good life before I die, I'm just going to die. I'd like to have a good life before I die. How about you? So just, yeah, just... November 5th is our next show. Yes, November 5th. See you then. Thanks for watching.